Well, President Trump's economic agenda getting little attention during his contentions, contentious news conference yesterday. Mr. Trump claiming it will help to heal the racial divide in the U.S. Take a listen. Uh, race relations in America. Do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time. And you can ask President Obama about that. I believe that the fact that I brought in, it will be soon, millions of jobs. You see where companies are moving back into our country. I think that's going to have a tremendous positive impact on race relations. Joining me now, national spokesperson for the Congress on Racial Equality and conservative commentator, Niger Innes. Great to see you, Niger. So let's start with this. Oh, we talked a little bit about uh, this with Brunel, about how uh, people are forgetting that, that a lot of the old policies that this president has, has pledged to push away uh, have taken away power from, and choice from people in the inner city, uh, whereas jobs and, and more control over how you raise your children empowers people in a way that they haven't been for decades. No question about it. It empowers the entrepreneurial spirit that exists in every ghetto and every burial. It, uh, 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 the deregulations that the president has done through executive orders are going to unleash uh, capital, investment, and small business development that have the boot of regulations and high taxes on their neck in the inner cities in the burial. And, you know, this, in this con so called controversial press conference, you know, what was lost, I saw it for the first time in its entirety, Trump spent a good couple of minutes talking about the fact that his infrastructure plans and his tax reform is going to have a dramatic effect on the inner cities and the fact that he's got big, big plans for the inner cities. And you know something, David? I get the feeling that many within the uh, mainstream media, liberal media, they don't want this president to succeed. They don't want his plan of economic reform to come to fruition because they're scared to death that actually there's going to be economic uplift for blacks and browns and working class whites all across this country. Well, and and I, at the end and of I the think, day, I think it's about you're onto something, Niger. I think you're definitely onto something. And, and there is one group specifically that does not benefit from President Trump's plans <laughs> if he's successful. And those are the vested interests, the people that have a yes. vested interest on maintaining control of uh, poor people who the president wants to give control to. And I'm talking about people like Al Sharpton, who had a uh, revolving door in the White House in the Obama administration. I can't, I lost count of how many times he was there, at least 80, uh, probably more. But Al Sharpton now, it looks like, is writing the copy for the major newspapers and the anchormen all over America. He is writing the talking points, and they're reading the script uh, uh, very well, uh, and they're reading it over and over and over again because what they want to do is they want to focus minorities on chasing the bright, shiny object and not paying attention to what is most fundamental across racial lines, which is a good job at good wages. And the fact is, is that, you know, there's been a renaissance in the manufacturing um, uh, industry, I think some uh, half a million jobs, and this actually started even at, at the tail end of the Obama year, years, um, but it's continuing under Trump, and I think it's going to be accelerated if he, if he can get his economic program if he through can get it, it's a big uh, the if. Congress. That's a very big if. It's, but it's a big if. He's, he's got to get it through, and he's got to okay. put some pressure on some Republicans yeah. that, uh, unfortunately, are turning out to be never Trumpers. Well, particularly the leadership in, in both the Senate and the House. Final question though, Niger, do, do you, yeah. you really think that there is a way, if in fact these changes get in, uh, that, that minority communities are going to recognize that they have a freedom and opportunity like they have never had before because there are real constraints to the, to the system of offering nothing more than, than welfare and, and choices that are decided by the people inside the Beltway rather than by individuals in the community? The president got over 11 percent, I think close to 13 percent of the black male vote in the last election cycle, and that's because there are a lot of independent black males, white males, Hispanic males, and women 
uh, that are looking for economic opportunity. They're looking for a good job, good manufacturing job, good wages. And once that comes, there will be a bell of liberation that rings in ghettos and burials and working class communities all across this country. That's what the liberals are afraid of, not uh, the white Aryan nation or the Klan. By the way, David, let me just say, Quickly. for all these armchair activists, I'm the only one that debated David Duke in studio and kicked his butt, and I'm the son <laughs> of a father that knocked his skinhead on his ass on national TV. So those Boy, guys have nothing on us on taking on the Klan and, and these uh, skinheads and these white extremists. The great Roy Ennis, your dad, he was, he was quite a man. Thank you very much for being here, Nigel. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, David. Well,